welcome students to your social study class so today the chapter which we will learn is the indian government so the main topic which we will discuss in this chapter are types of government in india functioning of central and state government and how they work together for the welfare of people okay so now let's start government india has a democratic government which means it is a government of the people for the people and by the people in a democracy people have the right to vote and choose their representatives who govern the country so in this type of government that means the democratic type of government people means we have the right to vote and choose our representatives okay the one who will govern the country all citizens of india who are above 18 years of age have the right to vote and elect the members of the lok sabha so who can give the vote those who are above 18 years of age it is a very valuable and precious right which should be exercised for the smooth functioning of the country so it's a very important right okay and we should give the vote wisely so that our country runs of functions smoothly the parliament is the supreme law making body in our country in india the elections to the central and state governments take place after 5 years so after every 5 years the election for the central and the state government takes place there are different political parties in india some examples have been given like the indian national congress bharatiya janata party the communist party of india marxist okay these are some of the national political parties of india the president of india the president is the head of the country and the commander in chief of the armed force so who is the head of our country the president and he is also the commander in chief of the armed force means the army the navy and the air force the official residence of the president is the rashtrapati bhavan in new delhi he or she is elected by the members of the lok sabha rajya sabha and the legislative assembly for the period of 5 years so who elect the president the members of lok sabha rajya sabha and the legislative assembly legislative assembly means the supreme law making body in a state now lok sabha so there are many political parties in our country with specific symbols and ideologies like the indian national congress bharatiya janata party etc and indian citizen who is above 25 years of age can join any political party and contest the elections so in order to contest the election one must have to be above 25 years of age if he or she gets majority vote then that individual can become a member of the lok sabha so if he gets the majority vote then he became the member of the lok sabha one can contest the election as an independent candidate also each lok sabha candidate who is elected by the people from his constituency is elected for a period of 5 years so the duration is 5 years the total members in the lok sabha are 552 of these 530 members are from the states 20 members are from the union territories and two members are chosen from the anglo indian community by the president of india proceeding of the lok sabha are presided over by the speaker so there is a speaker in the Lok Sabha. The Lok Sabha is also known as House of the People or the Lower House. So Lok Sabha is also known as the Lower House or House of the People. Okay. Rajya Sabha. So the Vice President of India is the Chairman of the Rajya Sabha. And there can be a maximum of 250 members in the Rajya Sabha. And out of which 12 are nominated by the President of India. Okay. So nominated means to propose the name of a person. Yes, 12 members are chosen from the field of art, cinema, literature, poetry, sports, etc. 
Now the members of the Rajya Sabha are elected by the members of state legislative assemblies for a period of six years. So their duration is six years. One third of its members retire every two years and are replaced by new members. So after every two years, one third of the total member gets retirement and those players are replaced by the new members. And Rajya Sabha is also known as the upper house of the parliament. Okay, now state government. So every state in India like Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, etc. is governed by a state government. Okay, so every state has its own government. All the states have a legislative assembly and the members of the legislative assembly that MLS are elected by the citizens of the India who are above 18 years of age. So the people who are above 18 years can elect the members of legislative assembly. Now, after the assembly election, the governor who is the head of the state invites the leader of the majority party to form the government for a period of five years. The leader of the majority party became the chief minister of the state. Every state has a governor and a chief minister. The governor is appointed by the president of India. So the president of India appoints the governor. Okay, now functioning of the central government. So there are many political parties in our country who support different candidates in election. Every political party has its own candidates, right? Who elect like the election. The party who gets the maximum votes and get a majority forms the government. In case a party falls short of the majority, it can join hands with the other parties and form the government. This is known as a coalition government. So coalition government means what? Suppose a party falls short of majority, he can join hands with the other party. Okay, and the form a government. The party which has come to power proposes a name for the position of the Prime Minister of India. Party who gets the majority suggests a name for the position of the Prime Minister of India. The Prime Minister is sworn in by the President of India. The Prime Minister has a special team of ministers which are called the Cabinet Ministers. And these ministers are assigned various departments like the Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Human Resources, Ministry of Agriculture, etc. These ministries are assigned to these ministers. The ministers at the central government have corresponding ministers at the state level also. Similarly, each state too has its own education, home and health ministers amongst the other. Okay, in state also, the ministers are there. Functioning of local governments. The villages are governed by institutions like the Zilla Parishad and Gram Panchayat. This organization solves day-to-day -day problems in the districts and villages like providing electricity, water, sanitation, education, maintenance of road, etc. Okay. So in village level, we have Dila Parishad and Gram Panchayat. The cities and towns are managed by the municipal corporation and municipal councils. And in cities and towns, we have Municipal Corporation and Municipal Council. So, look after this problem. Now, Judiciary. Every citizen of India has certain rights which are enshrined in the Constitution. In the sum of the rights are right to freedom of speech, right to equality, right against exploitation, right to vote, etc. So, these are some of the rights written in the Constitution. We have a judiciary system to protect this right. Okay, so, in order to protect this right, we have a judiciary system. The Supreme Court of India is the highest judicial body in our country and is headed by the Chief Justice of India who is appointed by the President of India. So, the President appoints the Chief Justice of India who is the head of the Supreme Court. Means the highest judiciary body of our country. In our country. People who break law of the country or indulge in any criminal activities are tried in the court of law. Every state has a high court and a smaller courts at the district level. Every state has a high court and smaller courts are also present in district level. If a citizen is not satisfied by decision given any level, 
he can appeal to a higher court in his state so if he is not satisfied with the small court he can go to the high court and eventually he can also appeal to the supreme court of india now working together the constitution of india is a book of laws based on which our country is governed so in our constitution the role of the central and state government are clearly mentioned the central government is responsible for making laws for the whole country and ensuring their implementation the security and defense of a nation diplomatic relation with the neighboring countries etc so these are some of the responsibilities of the central government and what will the state government do they will ensure law and order maintenance of road and infrastructure education and basic amenities for the people in the state so these are some of the functions of state government in case of a natural calamity such as flood the central government offer help to the state government and both work together for the welfare of the affected people so in case of any natural disaster or calamity the central government offer help to the state government so that they can work together for the welfare of the people this is all about this chapter so in this chapter we have basically get to know regarding the types of government and how they function together for the welfare of a country students i hope this video will help you to understand this chapter and that's all for today's class thank you